So I partnered with uh, Raquel. Unfortunately, she's not here this evening. Um, and she's the school principal for Belleville South High. Um, and it was such a privilege to partner with Raquel. Um, if there's anything I can say about her, I think she just genuinely cares about the children um, and really just wanting to make a difference at Belleville South. Uh, I had never been to Belleville, so the first time I told um, Kim, my line manager, that I'm off to Belleville South, she was like, are you sure? Are you going to be safe? I was like, oh, come on, man. I'm sure I'll be OK. And I made my way to Belleville South. Um, and we used to meet on Friday mornings. Uh, and each time, it's as if Raquel forgot of the appointment, because <laughs> she's always running around. There is always a child waiting you know, to see her. She's always dealing some problem. So I got used to this. I got used to anyone will just walk through as you're having the meeting. You know, you get accustomed to it. But if anything, it gave me exposure to the kind of issues that she was dealing. Um, and it ranged from he brought drugs to school. Now we're dealing with a case of expulsion. I've got the HOD um, right in the room next door and they're having to hear out this case and the parents are waiting alongside the corridor. So these cases were quite interesting and then the one Friday we took a, a walk around the school and it was during the time where we were suffering a real drought and Vodacom had sponsored some water to the school so they were giving out water bottles um, to the students but now there was just absolute chaos because everybody went to collect water, the secretary forgot to ring the bell, so people were just confused as, is it the next class now, or are we still supposed to be in the same class? And so as we journey along, and Raquel is like so stressed and panicked and irritated, and then we see some of the teachers couldn't care, on their mobile, you know? So those are the, all the issues now I get exposed to, and I realize, Wow, she's got a lot of challenges. And you can see why she's wanting to get more and more involved. And her concern is what is happening in the classroom. So we then sat down and I said, OK, Raquel, I think I'm studying to understand what's going on and how much you're dealing with. And added to the problems were she was just a new school principal. She was successful as a de deputy principal for so many years. and I. I, I believe this is just into a second year of being a school principal in a very successful performing school, but now suddenly they're just having such performance issues. And one of the things I guess we realized was important is for her and her leadership team to align mm. because she literally has been holding everything in her two hands and there aren't enough hands that are actually helping her along. So those are one of the challenges that she seriously has been facing in this journey. The second challenge I realized as we also walked in, I had more exposure to the school, was just in terms of the learners, being able to celebrate more in terms of the success stories, being able to, I guess, see more positive behaviors because you're still seeing children banking. Each time I drove in, there's some children at the soccer field, you know, she has to literally come out, so, you know, call them in. Then she becomes very, very strict, locks them out, and then you see this whole crowd of students also standing outside. Then she has to deal with the repercussions. And so it was the leader, it was the student discipline that she was dealing with. That was the second challenge. It was dress code, the respect of the, of the school uniform, and just wearing it with pride. And so I try to make her at least clearly see these challenges and then we can engage in terms of what needs to be our focus and how do we approach these matters. Um, and I, I can say, I mean, we're still dealing all of this. I think she's still got a journey. Um, and together we have to still figure how we're going to um, ensure success in all of these challenges. Um, but in the year, I can. It, gladly say we had the opportunity to touch the learners. Um, so at Swiss Re, 
um, on Women's Day, we usually send out a woman out for breakfast. Um, and then last Women's Day, I thought, well, let's do something a bit different and something much more meaningful. And that was to make it meaningful for younger girls and give us working women the opportunity to be able to impart what we have been able to gain in these so many years. And I ran it past our colleagues and they were absolutely excited. And if anything, it opened my eyes to how many hearts are ready to give, even in our work environment. And so, so many women said, Bongi, we're willing. You know, we actually don't want the breakfast. We've done the breakfast so many years. We actually don't want the breakfast, but we're happy to host the young girls. And so, we all gathered around prior to the girls even arriving. And I remember as we said, the women's, one of the questions were, and I remember Evo, who's our claims manager, she said, wait, but, but what is it that we want to gain out of this? How do we want the girls to feel after this session? And it was such an interesting journey with the women because we all had to reflect in terms of our comfort areas as well. You know, we played in terms of the potential stories that can come through the conversations, knowingly the kind of environment Belleville South is. And so we had to reflect in terms of, okay, so we're not psychologists. This is where our expertise lie. So what happens if we open a conversation in this manner and it becomes so emotional? What are we going to do? You know, so, but it, and what was so um, great for me was just the care that was taken even just to prepare for these young girls coming into our environment. And so we finalized the agenda and how we were going to receive the girls. And we received the girls. So we organized transport. They got fetched from the school. They came in for the morning. And it was absolutely amazing. We had breakfast with them. We shared who Susri is, what's our mission. And then we had two young students. We thought it was very, very important for them to share how, you know, their, their journeys and how they've made a, a success out of their lives. And we had one lady, um, Leanne, she actually lived in Kales River. So she said, I know, I know the challenges that they're facing, so I want to speak, you know. So Leanne spoke up and she encouraged the girls, and then thereafter we broke up into smaller focus groups. And in the smaller focus groups, it was absolutely amazing. So the objective really was to impart as much knowledge as we can to the girls, to encourage them. But importantly, we said, we want every single girl to walk away with a goal in mind. And so we had the focus group conversations with the young girls. And yes, they were emotional. There were tears shed. Um, but what, was what we learned is the impact of the community, the challenges that they face was nothing that we have ever faced. So we acknowledged that, and so it opened our eyes. And if anything, it touched us more to want to help those communities. Um, and importantly, we made these girls identify one goal, one thing that they're going to try walking out of that conversation. So we prepared nice pick, um, gifts for them, and they took, took that away. Um, so it was absolutely memorable, but we were not ready for the repercussions thereafter, which the men in the office asked, so what about us? How come you didn't involve us? We also want to play a role, you know? So then we said, okay, cool, so next time we'll make sure that we extend it and widen it um, to the rest of the office. So it was such a, a success that they've said that they actually want to play a bigger role than that. So I have no doubt that Susri will still want to touch uh, Belleville South more. We also had um, the opportunity, so we partnered with Paper Video. I'm not sure how many of you know Paper Video. Brilliant. So it was also our opportunity to touch um, Belleville South as we knew of their own challenges, and especially with the metric rate, um, pass rate that has gone down. Uh, we said, Raquel, we certainly need to give you support in terms of improving the learner's curriculum. So we partnered with Paul from Paper Video, and he's since rolled out Paper Video at Belleville South. Uh, so we are keeping in contact with Paul, making sure that they're getting more and more assistance. 
I've also had the special privilege to be involved in our CSI uh, company. Um, and we work with an NGO called Community Cohesion. And they currently partner with a school called Swans Fake. So um, we try to partner with a single school at a time and make a difference in one school at a time. Um, and that's providing them every form of support. And a lot of support they need is uh, psychological support for the learners, uh, counselors into the school, and then helping the teacher and the principal. Um, and so this is an opportunity that we've also extended uh, to Belleville South, that we've said we would like to partner because the kind of cases, as I've shared, that they're dealing with, it would be good also not to only just um, touch them on an academ academic level, but to help start partnering and seeing on a community level how is it that we can help the learners and where they need counseling and where they need the help of a psychologist that we start giving them that support. So there's still more plans and there's still more work to be done with Raquel's leadership team. And I'm hoping that um, it's a journey that we will start um, Q, Q2 um, as soon as I guess she settles down because I think she's really had a rough start also to the year. She's just had so much on her mind but the objective is to get her to focus and the next part of the journey is to really just get commitment with the, with this, with the leadership team. So I think then if we do that she won't be on her own and she can certainly feel more hands in partnership. Thank you.